because he read them the First Amendment. The power of those few words is immense. It can build up a, a beautiful body of workers and people who can change this country for the better. I mean, either that or if you have children, folks, and you're not standing up for their rights and in school and places like that, you're asking for a lot of trouble for the future. This week's specials with Miles Franklin Precious Metal Investments. 10 ounce Wall Street Mint Silver Bars for only $3.15 per ounce over spot and 2021 Silver Philharmonics for only $3.75 over spot. Call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We have a returning guest of some impact. John Whitehead is the founder of the Rutherford Institute. He's a constitutional attorney who has argued cases up to and including the U.S. Supreme Court. He stands up as a champion for the rights of the ordinary person against governmental overreach. He's recently penned a new book, in his Eric Blair Diaries series, the first called Battlefield of the Dead. And he also just wrote an article called Tyrants of the Nanny State When the Government Thinks It Knows Best. John, thanks for joining us again here on Liberty and Finance. Thanks for having me on, sir. At the beginning of your new uh, article that you just penned, Tyrants of the Nanny State, When the Government Thinks It Knows Best, you have a quote there from Simone Weil, a French philosopher and political activist. I'd like to read that right now to set the tone for this, because there are so many areas of encroachment of our freedoms that we'd like to get your perspective on that as you've brought us in the past, but bring us up to date. The quote from Simone Weil, whether the mask is labeled fascism, democracy, or dictatorship of the proletariat, our great adversary remains the apparatus, the bureaucracy, the police, the military, not the one facing us across the frontier of battle lines, which is not so much our enemy as our brother's enemy, but the one that calls itself our protector and makes itself its slaves. No matter what the circumstances, the worst betrayal will always be to subordinate ourselves to this apparatus and to trample underfoot in its service all human values in ourselves and in others. Quote from Simone Weil, French philosopher and political activist. We and our viewers take that to heart. That sentiment is very much a grave concern to all of us who believe in the love of freedom, the love of the individual sovereignty of our families, of our uh, communities, of our counties, of our states, and our beloved countries, and all of which are getting uh, trampled in the name of globalism and with lots of other excuses, you can give the excuse of the day, but it makes no difference. The the net result is the same, and it's the trampling of the freedoms that we, of all of those uh, that are closer to us. Can you take us through uh, this wonderful outline that you just penned about the, the ty- tyrants of the nanny state when the government thinks it knows best? And I'd like to work in where I can some questions that were submitted by viewers, and I think there are several that will fit right in with that. But if you could launch us into what got you lit up about this. Well, we've seen it recently, most recently with the COVID lockdowns, vaccine mandates. Um, we've been flooded for legal help, and we're doing the best we can to help people who are f- former Army veterans, people with religious exemptions. I mean, uh, a lot of the companies that are working with the government, basically, and they do work with the government very closely, uh, are not being very, very sensitive to people's needs. And we're seeing that um, with... Um, all the shadow banning and criminalizing of the speech we're seeing today. And I mean, kids, how kids are being treated in schools. We've had all many, many cases where kids will just say the word gun in fourth grade and they're pulled from the classroom and charged with a, a weapons violation. We had one kid up in the Ohio who went to the front desk to grab a piece of paper, turned, saw his best friend in class who did a finger gun at him. He did a bow and arrow, imaginary bow and arrow. Teachers saw it. They pulled him out of the classroom, charged him with a weapons violation, uh, which is insane. Just think about it. <laughs> there are people in the past that was, you, you're kidding me. I mean, they were, the, what, what's happened to you people? Uh, we got in the case and got the, the charge dismissed because of what happens now with all these kids and students in school, by the way, colleges, they get charged with something like this. If they ever want to be a judge or something, that's going to be on their record. Weapons violation. Wow. And people are afraid today. All the warrantless surveillance that's being conducted on us by the government. I mean, 
uh, with the local police all the way up to the NSA and all those groups. The NSA downloading millions of phone calls every day, billions, several, two billion emails daily. They're watching all of our emails. They're working with local police. They have uh, all kinds of new app devices that they've given over to uh, police, a uh, new app device called the Shadow Dragon, which uh, where it took, used to take like 120 days to collect certain information on people. Now it's like two hours. They can do a total profile of you. If you've lived to be 75, 80 years old, they can go back and won't and get a profile of what you did and the algorithm. It's done by artificial intelligence, which is the big thing coming, in my opinion. We're moving into AI land, which is going to be very, very dangerous. The SWAT teams. Uh, I grew up as a kid, uh, and when I grew up in Illinois as a kid, my local police chief didn't even carry a weapon. I asked him one day why he didn't carry a gun. He said, I don't want to shoot anybody. He wore a brown uniform. Today now there are 80,000 SWAT team raids annually in America. They're crashing through doors. They shoot up to 500 dogs a day in this country. They shoot poodles. Kids have been shot. I had one local police chief call me. He said, I've been reading your stuff. He said, I'm starting to agree with you. Uh, it was a small community. So we did a, a, a SWAT team raid recently, and one of my uh, men actually put an AK-47 to a four-year-old kid's head. He goes, it freaked out everybody in the police force. And I say, but, but here's the key. They're training the police militarily anymore. Serve and protect is off on most cars, especially if you're in big cities. I mean, they are the military. Look at them with the black outfits on and stuff like that. And what does black signify? It's what Darth Vader wore in a Star Wars film. It is, I am the authority. And But wait a second here. What's the Constitution of the United States say? We, the people, do ordain. We are the authority. But see, most people have given that over and become wimps before all the things you're seeing. Police searches I've seen where in some cities they've asked people to stand over uh, on sidewalks in big cities uh, where they do anal searches and stuff. They're pulling women over and doing vaginal ser searches on highways. I mean, these are things that have just gone so far. Fusion centers. I'm trying to give people an idea. You go, need to go to our website at rothbard.org and read deeper on this because, like I say, uh, education precedes action. Learn what's going on in this country that the mass media doesn't report, by the way, to you very well, and see what's going on. But with these fusion centers now, uh, and real-time crime centers are spread around the country. They're big centers with uh, screens just embalming the room, if you want to use that, if I want to use that term. It's just like embalming, yeah, because they're treating us like zombies. And they're watching everything we're doing, license plate readers, tracking wherever we drive and down the road, stuff like this. Uh, 70 countries use the word global. 70 countries around the world now use facial recognition software on their streets. People don't know that. In this country, the smart cities have made a pact. They're working together with the NSA, uh, CIA, and groups like that when you're walking down the street. They're working with the big stores, the Walmarts and stuff. They're using facial recognition software to watch everything we're doing. What does the Fourth Amendment say, folks? It should You should be outraged. The police should not be doing surveillance on us unless they have some reason to believe we're doing a criminal act, number one. Number two, if they're going to do it, they need a warrant. They need to go before a judge and argue the case with your lawyer. They don't do that anymore. They just collect a file on us, and we have algorithms now. And what was studied at MIT and Harvard did a study. This is, this is where we're moving to predictive policing, and that is we're going to get these people before they commit their crimes. Uh, MIT, Harvard, and several other universities did a study of people arrested in Washington, D.C., based on algorithms. 94% were found not guilty of anything and released. In other words, they were rounded up, treated like criminals, because some artificial intelligence creature, or whatever you want to call it, actually spotted them as someone who would commit a crime. So that's basically what we're seeing here. We have the government stockpiling information like mad, like crazy. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security, uh, Department of Homeland Security, buying 1.6 million hollow point bullets and giving hollow point bullets to their 175,000 agents, and some local police are carrying those now. I was a former infantry officer. We could not use hollow point bullets. They were considered basically the bad way to do something because the hollow point bullet, when it hits your skin, it expands on contact and it'll blow your arm off. Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy. 
had him in the head. You know, if you remember the scene where Jackie Kennedy's reaching for John F. Kennedy's head off the back of the car, that's what a hollow point bullet does. We have officers running around this country, and here's the crazy thing. The, all the FBI surveys they're doing shows that crime is at an all-time low in this country. It has been for the last 15 to 20 years. So why are they doing this is the question. Why are they building a simulated city in Fort Benning, Georgia, for a couple million dollars where they're training against domestic terrorists? What in the world are they doing? Who are the, who are, is it me? Is it me or you, Dunnigan? Are we one of the domestic terrorists? Actually, I mean, it's uh, parents going to their uh, local school board meeting, right? Exactly. They're labeling everybody a terrorist now. People, actually, people that were uh, have been f- fighting this COVID thing have actually been put on like a domestic terrorist list. And the government, you know, has that huge main core database where over 8 million names at least. And that was uh, when I did my research years ago, and you can't hardly get any information on it now. I bet it's up to about 10 million names at least now of people who will be rounded up in times of distress. Distress, that's the word they use. And with the, what they have going on, they have FEMA camps now around the country that the Halliburton Corporation built. Uh, I've been told by former NSA agents they were built on military bases. They're ready to go, operational, if they need to round people up. So we're, we're dealing here when people say, uh, the nanny state, and, I, and that's what I like to call it. It is the nanny state, but the nanny state is a shadow government. It's been called the deep government, and the studies show that uh, our government is run. Uh, a, a study out of Northwestern Princeton showed that this government's run by 585 billionaires, essentially, that work with contractors, etc. Jimmy Carter actually came out and blasted them and said, all it is is when you get elected president or whatever in this country, you're, you're just kissing up to somebody with money, and they get all the, all the favors and stuff. So that's what we're dealing with. You think you're in this free country and all that? No, you're not. You're in a country that would like to suck you of all your money. I mean, Americans spend uh, more money, uh, more money on taxes and food, and, you know, medical care and housing. Just think about that a second. And you have the, uh, the, the big shots in Washington, D.C. are driven around in limousines with police patrols and stuff like that. We have a Supreme Court that I've written about continually that will not listen to a darn thing we say about our civil liberties anymore, hardly. They just say yes, uh, yes, and that moves on. So everything you've been taught is what I've been trying to tell people in our so-called educational systems. Uh, a lot of it's false. It's uh, an idea, and I, th- I think you alluded to it. Uh, we get here on this planet. We come into these situations. We're here, and we show up as children, and where are we at? Did we vote on any of this? <laughs> no, we're told, all right, from day one, you will follow what I say. You will do this. You will do that in the classroom. Uh, I always had trouble in the classroom because I had trouble following what I thought were <laughs> teachers that sounded like idiots, and they were always sending me to the principal. But, and, you know, I was, as a kid, I was told, you know, you're, uh, my high school counselor said, you're an idiot. You know, basically, you, you will not do well. You don't need to go to college, he told me, on my senior year in high school. He said, you don't have any intellectual ability. You need to be a factory worker. And thank God I had, I had a friend who said, John, he, I think he's wrong. I think you have more brains than that. You ought to try education. And so I tried education, and it kind of worked, folks. But the point is, and again, a lot of intelligent thinkers like that, I look at Albert Einstein and people like that that didn't go to college, basically. They, they couldn't take it. Ernest Hemingway had a, a high school education. Uh, there are a lot of really bright people out there that went against the system, and they go against the system. But I, I know this. They're all tracked. The FBI tracks about everybody, anybody that disagrees with them. All those people I just mentioned were all the FBI watch lists. And the FBI now is collecting huge coded database on all our DNA, you know, with 50 million samples of DNA now they have. They want to know our biometrics. So I'm trying to wake people up. I'm trying to get them to see that. This government we call the government of the free and all that is not the government. I keep going back. 
You know, 70 some percent of Americans do not know how many am amendments are in the Bill of Rights. Well, wait a second here. They all went to school. Many of them are in college and they don't know how many amendments we have. Well, why is that true? Why don't they know the Bill of Rights, the right to free speech, the right to own a weapon, the right to keep the cops out of your home, the right to a jury trial, down the list, the right to be free from surveillance? They don't know any of that, basically. And so the point is, is that we, through programs like this, my work and others, we've got to start waking people up. That's our job, you know, and don't give up easy. And I'm, I'm, one of the things I want to mention before I stop my diatribe here, the cultural death, that's what we're facing. Uh, the average America watches 150 hours uh, of television and screen devices a month. The average kid now is sucked into their cell phones. Uh, and everything being fed to them through those devices, I, I, I won't I say everything, but most of the information is government-controlled information. If you remember Carl Bernstein and Bernstein and Woodward? He was shocked after the whole Nixon debacle, and they got rid of Nixon for what he was doing. They... Uh, he, he went to work with some of the other mainstream media, and he said, basically, he wrote an article in 1977 saying, hey, it's all controlled by the CIA and NSA. They were sitting in the offices of the New York Times helping write and vet articles and on television news. When I watch uh, CNN, these news shows now, occasionally, I don't watch TV, by, by the way. I watch a few movies on TV, but I don't watch the news programs. But when I see them in a restaurant or something, I, and they're, always, they're always facing you in your restaurant now, too. Um there, there they are, uh, <laughs> these guys, the analysts with the news guy, their former CIA director, former NSA, former, I'm going, wait a minute here. These are government agents who helped set this up, and now they're giving you the news? So why don't most people know there are 80,000 SWAT team raids in America annually? And all this information I'm laying over, I tell people that they go, surely you're making some of this up. No, I'm just giving you the tip of the iceberg. So they don't know it because the mainstream media doesn't want you to know. The educational systems don't want a rebel. No, they want someone who will go Heil at the end of the day. They don't want people who will stand up and say, I'm sorry, teacher, don't I have free speech in this government institution? Sit down, you little idiot. I mean, we get those cases. We get the cases where a kid says the wrong word in school. And these uh, so-called security officers they have down in the schools, and by the way, I didn't know this, but so-called undercover marshals now have infiltrated a lot of schools. That janitor doing the sweeping or that guy, administrator, may be an FBI agent. They're actually working in the schools watching kids making, again, a file on you so they can get you early. So... We don't live, we, we're in sci-fi land now. The future, the past has come forward and the future has come uh, back and we are coalesced now into this kind of weird triangle where it's hard to think or say words or disagree with anybody, you know? I mean, it's the way it is. When I talk to young kids today, they don't have any clue. They can't tell you anything if it's not on their cell phone. And you got guys like Zuckerberg, who can't complete a sentence in Congress, running these big corporations. And again, there are a few honest ones like Elon Musk. He said it. We're moving into an era where AI is going to control everything. He said, here's the danger. If you have a human dictator, that human dictator might be overthrown or, or died, but AI will not die. It will become evil. He actually said that. This is the guy doing SpaceX. He's, he set up some other things that are profound like that. At least we're getting some warnings here. But are we listening? My opinion, we're not listening. A lot of what you just described about the uh, outcomes, the undesirable outcomes of the public school system, of the mass media and so on, people can look at that and shake their heads and say, ah, it's a failure of the school system. Ah, it's a failure of the media. Ah, it's a failure of the medical system. Ah, it's a failure of the government. We had... Uh, Alex Newman, who is the founder of the uh, Liberty Sentinel on, 
uh, just this weekend, and he said, no, each of these systems is working exactly as they were designed to work. This, this public school system is producing the outcomes it was designed to produce. The government is producing the outcomes it was designed to produce. The medical establishment is producing the outcomes it was designed to produce. The mass media is producing, the, and all of those outcomes are to strip people of their individual freedoms and concentrate uh, power in the elite. We have a follow-on question from Rob B, who keys right off something you just said. You said, children are born into this world where they're told, you know, other people are in charge of you. These, these forces outside you are in charge of you. He says, where, how, or who grants anybody in government their authority over you, your body, or property, if not by consent and if by force? Is that not slavery? Oh, yes. We're slaves. That's what I was saying. And uh, the, the planet, I mean, as we're doing, as we're moving into a global environment, again, I've said, it, we're moving fast. See, people don't get, know this either. The NSA has their Five Eyes program. They have bases all over the world. The NSA is now work, uh, working with Google, who works with China. They're, they have a worldwide system now. So that's exactly where we're moving into. Like I said, 70 countries now using facial recognition software. Uh, we're being watched wherever you go. I have people go, well, I just go to the woods. And I go, well, you can go to the woods, but if you take your cell phone or your laptop, you're not, they, they can come get you when they want to. Why? Have you seen the drones lately, folks? The drones are armed drones now. About 7 million are, are going to be flying over the United States soon. These new robotic dogs, I don't know if you saw it, Dunnigan, but recently they've set a machine gun on top of them. They used to just go to the door, you know, and sniff out people. The police are using them in some cities. They've actually mounted a weapon on them. So we're moving into a global environment that, no, I didn't vote for any of this. I would be opposed to it. I, th I think we need countries that, are independent. Uh, we need, and again, that uh, reduces the power, but they want a centralized power, and they're going to get that centralized power, in my opinion. Because with the invention of this uh, technocracy we're in, which makes people move into an idiocracy, we're not thinking at all. And like I say, I keep emphasizing to people, the Constitution says we, the people, do ordain this government. We are the government. The people so-called in Washington, D.C. are our representatives. And, but do they really recept, re represent us? Just think about that for a minute, folks. How do they represent us so really well? They take all of our money. <laughs> they do that. Uh, there are almost um, 5,000 federal crimes, 400,000 federal regulations. We get in these cases where people are arrested for doing rainwater, letting the grass grow too long. I mean, all the crazy cases we see in our in our organization, it's enough, it's enough to scare you because there are so many laws now. The average American can violate up to three laws a day, depending on where and how you work. And uh, with the way the police are being trained today, I've had uh, people who work in the police academies say, John, I'm really worried. They're training us militarily now. It isn't the old police guy who thought of you as his neighborhood people. Uh, and by the way, what... When I some of these big cities, I've noticed 70% uh, of the cops don't even live in that city. Some of them don't even live in that state. They come in out of town. They don't even know the local community anymore. They're there uh, to control. And a number of uh, policemen who have uh, gotten out of uh, the police and done some books basically say the police work for the corporate state now. And they do in many, many instances do that. They don't see us as the boss. That's what the Constitution says. We're the boss. They're the servants. But they've reversed it now. You use the word slavery? Yes. We the slaves do ordain nothing. We serve you, sir. In that environment, looking forward to strategies that people can use to reclaim or retain as much of their freedom as they can going forward, there's a question from Andrew Rosenberg. He says, how can citizens be expected to respect law and order given the current state of activists, judges, activists, prosecutors, threats of packing the Supreme Court, the executive branches disregarding uh, freedom of information out of system checks and balances. So uh, in the environment that we, in which we live, where it seems that the Constitution is not being upheld, how do ordinary citizens, ordinary people, uh, uphold and stand up for you? Know, you're, you're taking a role at, for the Rutherford as the Rutherford Institute, you're taking cases on behalf and standing up for through the courts, defending people against overreach. Uh, not everyone has your background or your training, so what can ordinary people do? Education precedes action. 
turn the TV off. I say take uh, those 150 hours a month that people spend sitting on their butts, uh, get educated, go to websites like ours, watch these kind of programs. And here's the key. What was the basis of founders in uh, early America? It was local government. And local government governs best. And what I'm telling people is education precedes action. Get educated. Get together in your local communities and start civil liberties oversight committees, I call them. Get together and do marches. Get in front of the Supreme Court. Here's the key, though. Be wise. Be very peaceful. Uh, you may get arrested. That's what groups like us are for, and we'll make a fuss about it. Uh, and take over your local governments. And get see a lot of local governments. People don't realize this are run by large corporate entities who come in, spend a lot of money, control local people. That's why you see the big businesses come into small communities and stuff. All of a sudden, uh, get the money out of there. Money corrupts everything. The love of money is the root of all evil, and I've seen it so many times destroy communities. And what you need to do is get together. Now you, it could it's, it's dangerous though. When you have someone who's very successful at it, like a Martin Luther King, bang, his family believes that the government killed him. I do, too, from all my research about him. Uh, John F. Kennedy, too, when he said, I'm going to take the CIA, tear it up, and throw it to the winds. But when he said that, someone shows that, shh, shh, watch out, dude, bang, you know. I think that, the, that there are people who run the government, the CIA and stuff, and I've written about this, by the way. They have basically no ethics. Their only ethics that they may have, if you want to call it that, principle is power. And people don't realize this. Uh, the CIA was set up by Reinhard Galen, who was one of Hitler's chief. And people don't realize this. This is history. Chief surveillance people, uh, spy generals over there. He came to America through Project Paperclip. And I'm sure you've heard of Project Paperclip. Okay. Thousands of Nazis came in. They went into the educational systems, into the uh, intelligence systems, and all kinds of things. And it had a tremendous influence on early government. If you remember the 1950s America, uh, when the McCarthy era, when they were busting through people's doors, the FBI, arresting people for writing a letter to somebody, a newspaper or something, and they appeared to be a lefty, you realize that uh, – Martin Luther King, not only Martin Luther King, but Frank Sinatra. I'm going to go on the list. Ernest Hemingway. You go down the list of all the people I've in my articles have talked about who are on the FBI watch list. All you had to do was disagree with the government. We're here today again, folks. And what I'm saying is there was a, a force that moved into the early American government that my opinion, and again, I'm not trying to be a conspir conspiratorialist here, never got out of there. It set an idea that the CIA, the NSA, and groups like that should run the show. And guess who told us that? Was it 2012, Edward Snowden? He had to run away to Russia. But here, this is it. And we got a guy over there in uh, a cage in England that we can't get out because he leaked some information about what they're doing. So if you resist the government, and this is kind of answering your question, you're going to get some resistance. Uh, if they think you're getting too strong, you may get arrested. You're going to get tracked. The FBI may show up at your door. You could get a SWAT team. How, how would you get a SWAT team rate? Because you say the wrong word on Facebook these days, algorithm, alerted, red flag gun laws. I know you know about those. Where if they, you know, come to your door if they see a gun on the wall or whatever or whatever. And no, not, I mean, they have these knock and talks now at night where police, police show up people's door and they're getting shot. I mean, these are things that need to be regularly reported around the country, and they're not. People need to realize what, what shape we're in. But I would say this. Do you want to go to your grave as an idiot or go to your grave as someone who took a stand for freedom for others? And I keep telling people this. We're on this planet for one reason. That's to help one another. And we've been told that that's not true. We're here to look up and say in government we trust. And if you, if you trust the government, I'm sorry, folks, uh, you're a very foolish person. 
or inexperienced. I saw a uh, an interesting graph. I as a retired engineer, I I love graphs, and one showed on the vertical axis is trust in government, on the horizontal axis is amount of life experience, and the curve starts high up on the left with a little bit of life experience and a lot of trust in government, and the line just keeps going down uh, as you go in and gain experience. A related question you mentioned along the way, you mentioned about uh, the the beauty of and the wisdom in our founding document of the Constitution of local government, local decisions, local authority. Uh, William Mueller asks, does the Constitution allow for state secession? If so, how likely is it that it could happen in the current environment? Oh, the Tenth Amendment says that the local governments can nullify acts of the federal government. Uh, it's clearly there, yeah. And uh, that power was put in there so states could look back and say, no, we're not going to do that. And what I'm saying here is that all this surveillance we're seeing SWAT team raids, crazy stuff that we're seeing today. And American people are not a violent people. So none of this makes sense. You can put a stop to it in your local communities. And that is run for government. Get together with key people who will look at and say, we're going to get control of the situation here. We're going to make sure our police are trained in the Constitution. I mean, I talked to policemen who do not know what's in the Fourth Amendment. What was funny was the case we had, we had a guy who was on a street corner. We give out these little... Uh, billfold cards that has the Bill of Rights on it. He was doing a picket, just him by himself on the street corner. I think it was New York City. Police pulled up real quick and got out of the car and walked up to him and said, what are you doing here? And he goes, I'm exercising my First Amendment he rights. He read them the First Amendment. They looked at him and went, oh, okay. He got in the car and drove off. So the power of those few words is immense. It can build up a, a beautiful body of workers and people who can change this country for the better. I mean, either that or if you have children, folks, and you're not standing up for their rights and at school and places like that, you're asking for a lot of trouble for the future. And like I say, when, they, uh, when you got people like Google pushing their singularity program where they want to fuse artificial intelligence with the human mind and stuff like that, we're going to be run by algorithms. By the way, like I said, that MIT study showed that 94% of people charged with predictive policing crimes weren't even guilty. What's going to what's going to happen, folks? Time to wake up. On the financial end of things, there's a question here about a wealth tax that's been widely discussed and, and proposed and brought forward in some nations. Andrew Rosenberg says, does not a wealth tax, when applied to physical precious metals, for example, violate the Fifth Amendment? Unlike Real estate, one cannot argue that the property owner benefited from roads, a school district, first responders, etc. What rational justification supports the constitutionality of an unrealized capital gains tax on physical precious metals? Oh, I think that we should fight that. Yeah, I think it's unconstitutional. And see, again, and again, I, I said Jimmy Carter out it when he said it's all about the money people. That's who you're thinking. Most of the richest built billionaires around us don't even pay any taxes. They have all kinds of tax in-runs and stuff they do, but they want your money. And here's the other thing you have to realize, uh, and they're moving in that direction, and, the, and the, it's been battered about uh, through the uh, Federal Reserve. They want to move into a digital currency, and the reason they want to do that is they will have everything you own at that point. They want your money, and it's, you know, that's basically it. Now, the, the famous uh, – Director John Car uh, Carpenter, who did the Halloween movie, his movie They Live. I'm encouraging people to watch it, by the way. I'm writing on it this week for Halloween about this invisible government. But he basically said, he said, the government wants one thing, your money. And that's the stuff we should be fighting. The state government should be fighting that. And our local government should be saying no. But you have to exercise your Tenth Amendment rights. John, in addition to your weekly writings, you've got a new book out, The Eric Blair Diaries the book Battlefield of the Dead. Why the name Eric Blair? And uh, tell us more about that. Yeah, my new novel is uh, The Eric Blair Diaries. Eric Blair was actually George Orwell's real name. I uh, read all of his biographies. I like Orwell. And uh, the, the novel is about a young guy who all of a sudden wakes up and finds out there's someone speaking to him. And it's actually George Orwell from the past who's come to him uh, about 50 years from today and is shocked to see what's happening and wants to work with him as a freedom fighter change things. And uh, so that's the, uh, in, in the book, what I do is I, all my research, I took it and, uh, and I applied what I saw coming and put it in the future. But actually a lot of it's happening now. 
You have Rex, what do they call Rex 84, it's patrolling the streets, robots. Everything is run by artificial intelligence. And people have to hide underground with money and everything just to survive if you want some freedom. And there's just a small group of freedom fighters, and their job is to stand up and fight the government. And that's what the novel is about. If people want to follow your work, where do they get plugged in? Go to Rutherford.org and get uh, read the weekly commentaries and get our our press releases and stuff and see what we're doing in terms of case law, etc. We've been speaking with John Whitehead, the founder of Rutherford.org and uh, a champion for people's rights against the overreach of government. John, as always, we appreciate your advocacy for all of us. And on behalf of all of our viewers, I just thank you for joining us here again on Liberty and Finance. Thank you, sir. This is Dunnigan Kaiser, founder of Liberty and Finance. I'm now a licensed gold and silver broker for Miles Franklin. Call me directly for the physical gold and silver that you need at the best price with personalized private service from one of the oldest and best companies in the business. 31 years strong, A plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, zero complaints, licensed and bonded for physical delivery, vault storage, or precious metals IRAs, excellent prices, privacy, and confidentiality. Pay by check, money order, ACH, bank wire, or Bitcoin, satisfaction guaranteed. For fastest service, just call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 888-81-LIBERTY. And either I or one of my sons and fellow brokers will call you back as soon as we can and understand your needs.